Okay guys, welcome back to the fourth and final installment of the customs I am making for Forest of Secrets. As of this video, I am finally done making customs for the first 16 episodes of Forest of Secrets. So excited to finally be done and to get to show all these cool designs to you guys right now. Let's start out with the quadruplets, the little mini tiger claw clones. You might be wondering, why do I need four mini tiger claws for Forest of Secrets? Where in the books is that? Well, it's going to be a dream sequence. It's going to be awesome. You'll see. There's a point in the books where Fireheart learns that Tiger Claw and the Golden Flower are expecting kits, and he has a nightmare about Tiger Claw having all these clones that attack him. We probably could have used movie magic to have all these mini Tiger Claws cloned on screen by themselves with editing, but I decided to just go the extra step and make four of them. And they turned out super cool! After I film the episode, I'll be sure to list these guys on Etsy at some point. So keep an eye out for that, eventually. But now Tiger Claw has his minions to do his bidding for him. So Fireheart better watch out. So now there's a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, six Tiger Claws! Wow, that's a lot! Tiger Claw is so proud to still hold the title for having the most clones in Forest of Secrets. He has six forms of himself, and Fireheart only has a measly four. So he still reigns supreme. That's right, keep watching the video, because at the end we're going to show all of the Fireheart clones that are finished now. Moving right along, in the early episodes of Forest Secrets, Cloudkit is cornered by a badger outside ThunderClan's camp, and so we got to make a cool badger custom. This is one of the first time in our Warriors episodes where we've made an animal that's not a cat. We used a Bull Terrier LPS base for the head of the badger, so they've got those long snouts on those LPS. And so now we are the proud owners of a single badger amongst all the other cat customs. Up next, let's take a look at Mistyfoot and her four kits. You heard that right, four. So many adorable kits. The first design you guys will be seeing was made by Dead, and this is for Perch Kit. Ironic um, username for that one because Perch Kit dies as a young kit. And so here is how I translated his design over. I really like that he has a lot of the same elements as his mom, Mistyfoot, of the swirls on his back in the same color as her. And he is so cute. I love the green shade of eyes that we did. So adorable. You guys are gonna be heartbroken when you watch the episodes. Up next, we've got Reed Kit, later Reed Whisker. His design was made by Nuggets Warriors. The thing I loved most about this design was, number one, that he wasn't just a plain black cat, which added a little bit more dimension to his pelt design, and also the whisker idea. And that never dawned on me that he might be named Reed Whisker and Reed Kit, because he has super long whiskers that are straight like a reed. And so we added that to his custom, and so now he's the second custom that we have that has whiskers on his face. The only other one is one whisker who just has the one whisker. But Reed Kit has four little cute straight whiskers on his face, and he is absolutely adorable. As one of the only siblings of this litter that actually lives to adulthood, I'm so happy that he has such a cute design now. I'm excited for him to continue living so that we can make his custom a full-size one in the future someday. Next, we have Pike Kit, and this design was made by Hidden Shadow. My favorite thing about this design is the little leopard spots on the back. We decided to make his custom laying just to switch things up a little bit. Love his design so much. Now for the only girl in the litter, we have Primrose Kit. This design was made by Giratini Wolf Studios. I love how cute and simple this design is. I think it turned out really well on her custom. We decided to make her sitting and I think she's so cute. So those are the four siblings. And uh, we know that only Reed Kit is gonna live to adulthood. So what do you think is gonna happen to Perch Kit, Pike Kit, and Primrose Kit? Let me know your guesses down below. Time to move on to another batch of kits, ones who are not going to die prematurely. Here we have Brindleface's kits, Ash Kit and Fern Kit, and her foster son, Cloud Kit. Let's take a look at them next to their tiny little teensy selves. But now they're a little bit more grown up. They're nearly apprentice age at this point in this story. Cloud Kit is going to be apprenticed at the end of Forest of Secrets, so he needs to age up a little bit before he gets his apprentice body. Let's take a closer look at those designs. The design that won for Cloud Kit was Diggy Dog Girls. I was really randomly hoping for a Flame Point Siamese design, but I'm glad that this one won with a little bit of a gray tail because it inspired me to go with more of a Gray Point Siamese look very faint, but I think it's so cute for Cloud Kit. I just think it's better for his design that 
It's not completely white because then he shows up better on camera, it's easier to focus on him, and he doesn't blend into the background quite as much. And of course, we wanted to get some points for originality. So let me know what you think of little gray point cloud kit. He is so cute with his little freckles. And who can deny those beautiful blue eyes? He is just adorable. He is going to get in so much trouble his last few moons of being a kit. Stay tuned to see the adventure in Forest of Secrets. And be honest with me, who's cuter? Tiny little teensy cloud kit or mini cloud kit? I don't know, I guess we'll just have to see in the episode how cute he ends up being for this new custom. Our next design for Fern Kit was made by Flutterfluff. She really is a tiny copy of her mom Brindle face, just a little bit lighter with her cloud-like markings. I really love doing this splatter technique, it's so much fun to do. So I'm glad I got to do that again with Fern Kit for her speckly splotch design. Last of all for the minis, we've got Ash Kit will later be Ash Fur. This design is so cool and I think it will translate really well for even when he's an apprentice and later a warrior. Made by Cotton Paws. I love how smooth it is and the little freckles and like his little under eye bags and grumpy eyebrows. And that he has a little heart on one side and an upside down heart on the other side. I like the darker shades of blue for his eyes now. I think they look really good. And let's remember what he looked like as a teensy little kit. This here is Speckletail. Her design was made by Mochi, and I really love this design for her. I think it looks kind of like a wildcat, with all the speckles and splotches all over her. Let's take a look at her past two versions of customs. Her first custom was made all the way back when we had just Into the Wild, and we haven't deviated too much for the general idea of what she's supposed to look like. She was a lot more rough back then and less smooth overall, and for her second version, she was a lot shorter, so we had to remake her because she had tiny little legs and she was about an inch shorter than she is now, so we had to remake her, and I really like the speckle design. I think it fits her a lot better for her name, Speckletail, to have little splotches and speckles all over her, and I'm excited to get to use this custom some more throughout the next few books for Warrior Cats The Prophecies Begin. Let's take one last look at those beautiful blending of splotches everywhere. She is gorgeous. I think her eyes are also super cool with like the reddish orange color. Up next, we're getting into main characters. This is Graystripe's new custom. So exciting to finally show him to you guys. The design that we referenced for making his custom was made by Shadowheart. The main element that inspired us for this custom was the darker patch on the booty coming down longer. We did decide to give him some stripes on his tail and on the back of his head because in the book cover artwork of Graystripe's Vow, he was a gray tabby with stripes on his body. So we decided it might be cool to add that to his design. In the past, we've usually done a much more simplistic design, but we decided to make it a little bit more complex for this custom, since he just has the one custom for now. But let's take a look back at all of his past versions. And oh boy, he's had a lot. So we're actually on our eighth Graystripe version. Oh my goodness, so let's take a waltz down memory lane and see all of the past Graystripe customs. Starting with... Aw, Graypaw! One of the first cats Rusty ever met that convinced him to join Thunder Clan. We could not be where we are now without the beginning, Graypaw. So cute. He did get a little bit of a tune-up, I think halfway through Into the Wild. He got some chest fluffs added, but I think we just added on to the same custom. You can see that he has the same ears. And we just made some adjustments to him, made him a tiny bit taller and a little bit more floofy. So those two customs got him all the way through into the wild. And when we started with Fire and Ice, we had a new custom for Graystripe. I'm not the biggest fan of this custom. I think his muzzle is a little bit too small. His eyes are very far down on his head, giving him a very large forehead. But I like his overall body design. But the orange eyes are a little bit too harsh for him and not my favorite. Just about the only changes we made to version number four was it was the same custom. We just made his eyes yellow now and we added eyebrows. Oh goodness, eyebrows, why? But those eyebrows did help him get Silverstream as his girlfriend, so I guess they did their job. Graystripe's fifth version got even more floofy. Eyebrows are there to stay. Suddenly he has golden eyes now. And an owl base for the custom. This one is super cute. I love all his floofs. No real complaints here, but I do know that all the floofs are a lot more fragile and they can break off. 
I don't think we used that custom for a super long time. Graystripe was missing a lot throughout Fire and Ice because he was always sneaking up with Silverstream. So there was sometimes large periods of time that he wouldn't be on screen. And so we would upgrade his custom in between then. His sixth custom just made a short appearance in Fire and Ice. This one was super cute. He had a purple nose and fluffy hair. And our most recent version, version number seven, he was super cute, our first time having a kangaroo head for him, and I really liked his design. Completely dark for the tail and the stripe going up his back, a little bit on the nose. It worked pretty well, but there was some sort of issue with his muzzle where it kind of poked out of his face from a certain angle. And of course, still rocking those eyebrows. So it's obvious that we couldn't completely say goodbye to the eyebrows, so we gave him some kind of dot eyebrows on his forehead, because he's going to be expressing a lot of emotions throughout Forest of Secrets, both happy and sad so we wanted him to have that ability to possibly show both emotions more so on the sad range later but now that we've looked at all of his past customs let's do a pan up those beautiful stripes see his pattern in all of its beauty and here's him with his girlfriend silverstream she thinks he's still a keeper next we'll be looking at sandstorm and this design was made by kitty cat low I really like this design because it's darker, more natural colors. Not so much a pale yellow sandstorm, but more of an earthy clay-like sandstorm. This is now our fifth sandstorm custom for filming. Her first one was a very sassy diva music apprentice with a little bang. Very cute. I liked her eyes. She was pretty adorable. For Fire and Ice, she got an older apprentice body, which was quite literally her younger version, turned into a little bit older, keeping the cute swoopy bang and getting an upgrade on the eye style. This custom was super cute, but we decided to remake her as Fire and Ice went on. Sandstorm number three. This one's base was an LPS and Gora cat. And those LPS have super cute hair. One issue is their eyes are super defined. And so it kind of gave her a sassy look, which worked for her that time period because she was still sending mixed signals to Fireheart, whether she liked him or not. She was like, mm, maybe I will go on a date with you, Fireheart. And they went and did their little hunting date while she was in this form. Honestly, super cute, but her palette ended up being a little bit too muted for what we wanted for her. And so we decided to switch it up and make her a new custom. Sandstorm number four had a more complex tabby design, and she was very yellow. Banana cream yellow, in fact, for the base color of her chest and around her eyes, which I thought was super cute, and I enjoyed the darker tones for her pelt rather than the lighter tones that she's had in the past. So we decided to keep that idea with the newer custom, but just make her a little bit more realistic colors. And so here we have what our fifth sandstorm looks like. I think she has a really gorgeous color of green eyes, and I love this LPS base so much. It's so cute. I'm so happy to have this custom with a more realistic sandstorm design now. I think she looks so cool. And now the moment we've all been waiting for. Let's take a look at Fireheart's new customs. The design that we loosely referenced for Fireheart's custom was made by Kitty Cat Loaf. We did end up deviating quite a bit from this design, but the main thing that we pulled from this design was the very bright base color of orange for Fireheart. Because in the past we've done quite a few different shades of orange, but we really liked Kitty Cat Loaf's idea of the bright orange. One thing you might notice is the little swirlless on his shoulder is shaped like a heart, so that's kind of like a draw-in of his name, Fireheart. I had so much fun with his stripe pattern and making it really complex, and you can see in the middle of his belly it's kind of like a flame pattern if you look really close. This custom marks our 8th version of Fireheart to be seen on screens for our Warrior series, starting off with the adorable little custom that started it all, Rusty off hunting in his backyard. He was rough for sure, but he had the most adorable hair and just a really great charm about him. I don't know if I'd ever do that again, have light orange stripes on dark orange, but it was certainly an idea that I went with at that time. And then version two, we did a little repaint on him. And I think this is when a lot of people in our fan base started calling him Dorito Paw. And that's when that kind of caught on because he was such a bright color of orange. It was almost fluorescent in certain lights, kind of like a Dorito. Now Firepaw version 3. We used this custom for like the whole second half of Into the Wild. Honestly, this base probably had eyes that were too far apart. I think it was a hamster or something. Some sort of LPS that has flat eyes, not eye divots. Which is usually a mistake for customs because they look better if it has a little bit of the eye indentation. But that was Firepaw version 3 that led him all the way up to the end of Into the Wild. He actually was made a warrior in this form too. Starting Fire and Ice, we got a new warrior version of Fireheart. More of a deeper orange color, 
with dark orange stripes. Kind of an inspiration for what our new Fireheart looks like, looking back at this past design. This custom was made out of a short-haired LPS cat. And you can see that he has the original ears, which is something we don't like to do anymore. We like to make our own ears, make them a little bit bigger. And this custom, another thing I have an issue with, is I think it has a little bit too much going on in its forehead. He has like little forehead um, dots like Krillin and M on his forehead as well. I just think it makes his face a little bit busy, but I do like the darker on the face fluffs. It's cute. Okay, oh goodness, this version, version number five I believe, was a big mistake. We painted Fireheart this way, and I did film a little bit of the episode where he was like walking into Blue Star's den when she was losing a life because I happened to film this before we decided to change him again. And um, so a little strange version of Fireheart exists in Fire Nice History <laughs> where he's got dots all over. And I think this is just an example of how you can do too much to Fireheart's face to give him too many markings going on on his face. So with a little bit more fan feedback in between painting him that way and fixing him, we decided to amend that into this design. This one though did have its own issues. Something happened with his face where he had, I don't know if it was some sort of spray paint that we sprayed him with, but it made him have a very chalky look to his face and eyes around one side of his eye. And that always kind of showed up on camera and it kind of bothered me. Also this base was not the best for head turning. It was super difficult to always bobble his head for speaking and filming. So it made filming like three times harder than it needed to be. So that was another reason for why we decided to eventually switch out this custom for his other version, the one that came just prior to his newest version. For his seventh version, we decided to really switch things up a lot. We did more of a coral base for him and then had the color that used to be his main base color be his stripes and then darker brick red as markings on top of that. So a pretty innovative idea, and I think this custom was super cute. His base was a goat, which was super impossible to find another one of. Yes, they're super rare new LPS. But yeah, he was cute, but he had eyebrows, so he had to be remade. Also, we gave away this custom at Christmas time to a fan who lived in Italy who ordered on Etsy. So now they are the lucky owner of this version of Fireheart. And the upside to this new custom design that we have for version number eight, our current and final, maybe final, version of Fireheart, is that he has four different clones of himself so he can do different actions. This is his sitting custom here, and we can see him stand up seamlessly and turn into his standing version. And if he was ever to face Tiger Claw in battle and see him and just get so angry that he turns into his angry form ready to throw some swipes and take Tiger Claw down. But if Fireheart was ever knocked down himself, he has a knocked over version where he is on his back with his little feet flailing in the air. That was always an issue with filming. Fireheart gets knocked down a lot in battle. So we're like, he needs a version where he's knocked down and he's like flailing his little arms. This version also works for him laying on his back when he's sleeping. Here's some different angles of what this custom looks like. Super interesting to make. We've never made a custom that was laying down like this before on its back. So it was cool to pioneer some different poses for customs. And these are all four Fireheart customs together in one shot. Let's take a closer look at the other three poses other than standing individually. First up, we've got sitting. It was super complex and difficult to make these stripe patterns go all the different ways for the different positions these Firehearts were in and to make them match up and still look close as we could to identical on the different customs. Here we have little laying down flailing Fireheart and him laying on his side. Angry Fireheart, swiping, hissing, back arched, ears back. Do you guys see that? That his little ears are back a little bit. He's not happy. One final detail I decided last minute was to not add any additional markings to his face because his body already is quite complex and my finger is usually on the middle of his forehead holding and bobbling the custom while I'm filming anyways. So I thought it was okay to leave his forehead blank. In the past, we've done a little bit too much on his forehead. So I didn't want to have anything that would draw away from when he switches from one form to the other, standing to sitting. So we can have that seamless transition without being like, oh, the M is slightly wonky. I always seem to mess up on forehead markings, at least when they need to be clones. So I just thought I'd take that element out of the equation. Personally, I think this simplistic looking face is better for the design. But I'm always happy to hear your ideas down below. What would you think of the four Fireheart clones? And now that I have all the customs that I need for Forest of Secrets, I am excited to start filming very soon. 
have some casting calls soon, and really get started on making Forest of Secrets happen. Be sure to let us know down below in the comments what your favorite custom design was from this video. Well, until next time guys, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye!